Hey, Magic fans. This time again for Foundations. This time we're going to dive into the darker side of things as we look at some of the base cards for black and what it means for the standard sets moving forward. <clears throat> so, let's not forget links in the description. There's things down there for the giveaways, eBay, TCG player store to support the channels, all that good jazz. Don't forget to go check them out. It helps keep the channel sponsor free by just watching because if not, I'm gonna see pictures. Probably not, because that's just really that just really doesn't work. Only that, that's gonna be horrible for everyone. Anyway, regardless, let's take a look at what Black has to offer in Magic Foundations. So we'll start off with a little bit of removal. We have Hero's Downfall, one of the best, most versatile. Removal spells to come out of black, probably across the formats. Now, when I say that, the key word there is versatile. Destroy target creature or planeswalker for two black and one at instant speed. Now, there are what could classify as better removal spells. Fatal push, things like that for one black. Terror. But a lot of those only target creatures. This targets a planeswalker or a creature. Um, and since planeswalkers have been, we'll say, a new thing to magic, well, not really new, but since they came out, things like terror have kind of lost their love because sometimes having a card that only targets a creature can get you killed as the planeswalker beats you up. So. Uh, when this came out in Pharos, I believe, uh, it was almost $15 because at the time, dealing with Planeswalkers removal-wise was very hard unless you had a creature could beat them in the face. So having a removal spell that targets a Planeswalker or creature was just the bees and knees. So this being back in standard, I believe will be a four of in any deck in black. Uh, with that, we don't have much else going on. We do have a goodie, but an oldie. Uh, we have a little bit, of st little stabby, stabby. One black target creature gets minus two, minus two to end of turn. This won't be seeing a whole lot of play, uh, to be honest, because minus two, minus two just doesn't do enough. I mean, it, with with a combat trick, you can still kill a creature. But the real thing on this is it's made to stop red aggro decks or white aggro decks. Uh, and to stop creatures that have invulnerability. Um, the minus two, minus two, if you take a creature to zero toughness uh, by putting its stat at zero, it dies if it's whether it's invulnerable or not, and that's the big draw to cards like this. Now, will it see a whole lot of standard play? Maybe not. We don't have a lot of cards that get invulnerability and stuff currently in standard. But having a card like this in Foundations in case one of those cards rears its ugly head is pretty sweet. And without there being better black removal, sometimes you can't be too picky on what's good. All right, so moving on next, we're going to start with Aristocrats. Because, you know, this guy likes to shave his chest hair. Anyway, uh, we have... This vampire, which is a black and one, as a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever this creature attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, draw a card, and this creature can't be blocked. Uh, you may be thinking to yourself, that doesn't sound like aristocrats, while some of you others might be saying, what the hell is aristocrat? So, what it is, is aristocrats deck is where a, normally a black, black and white normally, uh, deck has a whole bunch of creatures that have the ability to sack themselves or have a ability that triggers on death, uh, along with other creatures that say when this creature die, when a creature dies, opponent loses a life, you gain a life. And the whole point of killing them is not only the early game of ground pound, but also the I sack all my creatures and machine gun you basically off the battlefield. Uh, and what this is going to do is really, um, Power up those decks, we'll say, because you'll want to sack creatures. Uh, this will let you do that. It will also let you draw a card, which will let you draw more creatures to sack. And since it can't be blocked if you sack a creature, it means your opponent can't block and kill it. It's, it's basically everything that you need in a card for aristocrats. So with that being said, what else could be good in a deck like this? Well, 
we have this little fella. If you don't remember the nine lives familiar, um, two black and one for a one, one, uh, it enters with eight revival counters. Every time it dies, it comes back with one less counter on it until no counters are on it at all. And, uh, well, I mean, you lay your two, you lay the card we just had on turn two, lay this on turn three, attack, sack it. You then get to put it back into play, draw a card, rinse, beat, hell of a draw engine will be very powerful. On top of this also being really great for aristocrat decks when you can just start sacking creatures and sack this over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, other cards that'll help fuel those kinds of those styles of decks in in uh, foundations is a station mage. One black, one one, that when it dies, you get to make an insect creature token with flying, uh, which can also get in for a little damage over the top, if you would, uh, but also lets you sack this creature and then also the insect creature. So you kind of get a two for one for one black. Um, pretty good. Uh, and we'll probably definitely be seeing some play. So, yeah, aristocrats. And then, to go with that, we have the Vengeful Blood Witch. Black and 1-1-1. One, one, one. Whenever this creature or another creature you control dies, target opponent loses a life, you gain a life. Here it is, the standard for the deck. Now, with this, currently, there's only four creatures that do this. Uh, most Aristocrat decks have anywhere from six to eight um, because the decks are bigger, but sometimes four is good enough. Uh, and as the other format... Uh, I guess expansions come into standard. Um, this will definitely be part of the meta. The real question is going to be is how well the other decks uh, feed this deck in the grand scheme of things. So as we move on, uh, just cards that are good in general. We have the Abyssal Harvester, two black and one for a three, two, not a bad rate. Uh, the real powerhouse of this is is the ability to tap an exile target creature card from a graveyard uh, that was put there this turn. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a nightmare. In addition to other types, then exile other nightmare tokens. So this is a powerhouse for several reasons. Uh, one, once it's on the battlefield, once you use some form of black removal card, uh, you may then tap this to put whatever big nappy you just killed onto the battlefield. Uh, which can be very bad for your opponent when you start playing their own shit uh, because their stuff's probably better than yours in a deck like this. Uh, and these kind of graveyard shenanigans are things I've talked about before uh, and we'll probably see a lot more of it moving forward. So other sweet cards we have, we have Zul Asher, the Lich Lord, black and one for a 2-2 two -two zombie warlock, ward pay to life, already pretty sweet just in those. But the, the ability to tap it, you may cast target zombie creature card from your graveyard this turn, is amazing. This is basically tap, draw card of choice in graveyard. Really what it means. Because if you're playing a zombie deck, and I'm, there's not a whole lot of good zombies per se, but again, as other cards come out, this may become a real thing. Uh, the ability to have a good zombie in your graveyard, tap this and then just cast it for the giggles, uh, because you can, um, makes this card incredible. Because again, it makes your graveyard full of zombies your hand. The only drawback is you just have to tap this to cast one spell per turn. And that may just be good enough. Other than zombies, we also have little tiny bones. Little fella lost his jaw, apparently. Uh, the Bobble Boogler. Uh, black and one for a 1-3 legendary creature. This guy's pretty powerful, and it probably will be just a good add to any black deck. Whenever an opponent discards a card, you exile it from, you exile it from their graveyard with a snatch, statch, statch, not snatch, statch, counter on it. During your turn, you may play cards you don't own with stash counters on them from exile. Any mana can be spent to play it, blah, 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 all that good stuff. So this will be a very powerhouse card in decks that Black are known for, which are discard decks um, in standard. Now, and if you don't have enough cards, enough things to make them discard, for a Black and three, you can simply tap him, and each opponent discards a card as a sorcery. So, seems pretty sweet. I think he's definitely going to be one we're going to have to contend with throughout the course of Foundations, in standard, at least. 
Next, moving on, we have some of the more powerhouse cards. We have the five mana, five, five, <coughs> excuse me, flying death touching knight vampire. Um, that's already good. Flying death touch, five, five for five. Uh, but this one says whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. There's not much better life gain than that. Because if you swing in for 10 and they take it, <clears throat> you gain 10. So yeah, also, this does technically pair well with the Aristocrat decks. You know, sack a creature, opponent loses a life, you gain a life. So they'll lose one, and then this will trigger, they'll lose another one, and you gain that much life. There's lots of shenanigans, tons, tons of shenanigans here. And if you can't kill them that way, I mean, it's a 5-5 five, five flyer with death touch, just literally punch them in the face with it. Punch them in the face. Anyway. Other powerhouse cards, we have the High Society Hunter. This vampire is a 2 black and 3 5 3 flyer. Uh, when this creature attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on this one. And whenever another non-token creature dies, you get to draw a card. Another card that could be playable in Aristocrats on the high side. Um, but just a powerhouse as a 5 mana 5 3 flyer. So, there's what we have it in black. Uh, a little aristocrats, some zombie action, even a little bit of vampire tribal, if you would. But really, the vampires are just the high-end payoff cards at five or more. So, all that said, we're looking pretty sweet, and it's looking like we're going to have plenty of deck archetypes try out every rotation. So, until next time, be kind, and as always, I hope to see you across from the game table.